is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're gonna to be doing my favorite team the Portland Trailblazers so if I'm gonna be honest with you I actually don't like doing Blazers rebuilds because like we're already kind of the best team in the league so what am I gonna to need to ch no I'm just kidding but anyway I actually hate doing Blazers rebuilds because I'm so biased about the team that I don't really want to trade anybody but I'm gonna step into my comfort zone today rebuilding my favorite team I'm gonna make some serious changes now whether that be either trade let's be honest i'm not trading damian lord that's just not gonna happen that's just something i can't see myself doing but mccollum i might trade i do love cj mccollum in real life uh dearly don't get me wrong but i just kind of want to be different because most of the time when i do these blazers rebuilds lately it's just been me like i uh do the rebuild i keep a column in lower throughout the video i try to build around them and you know that's it and i just don't really want to do that today so for the team, though, as it stands right now, this is what the starting lineup would look like as far as 2K is concerned. I actually personally think Rodney Hood or Kent Bazemore will get the start at the starting three. Um, I prefer Rodney Hood there. They want to start Anthony Tolliver, and I also uh, think that Zach Collins is going to get the start at the power forward. So, yeah, I think we're going to go with that. And he actually goes up to a 78 overall. So, yeah, Lillard, McCollum, Hood, Collins, and then whatever Nurkic is healthy... He'll join the lineup, and then we have Hassan Whiteside, Pau Gasol, Hazonia, and uh, Kim Bazemore, of course. So I'm going to send uh, Pau Gasol to the power forward because I think he goes up. And overall, he gubs. Wow, he goes up to a 79. I was not expecting that. I'm going to move Pau Gasol to the bench, though. And then uh, Pau Gasol, I was not really expecting him to be a big part of this video, but he is a 79 overall already. So we're going to do something like that, and then we'll go with that. And then... Probably send this here Little and maybe Anthony Simons to the G League, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. Gary Trent Jr. wouldn't be bad to send there either, but I think I'll just go with this here Little. Now, for this first season, I don't think I'm going to do much. I really don't don't think I'm going to sign anyone uh, or as far I like not trade trade for anyone, of course. Basically, what I'm trying to say. Um, so, we're going to just sign Joe Noah because why not? And then we're going to go um, to Anthony Simons. I mean, I could experiment trading Hassan Whiteside right now because I really don't want to stop the trade deadline, and he does expire after the season. So, just out of curiosity, what we could get for Mr. Hassan Whiteside, I'm just uh, gonna look real quick. Parsons, Zeller, none of these are that great. Auto Porter was the best offer, and I'm not even sure how good of an offer that is. So yeah, I think I'll just leave it as it is. Hassan Whiteside, worst case scenario, we lose him in the off season. I'll try to do a signing trade with them maybe or something. But other than that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and simulate this first season. And see how this Portland Trailblazers team does in 2K. At the end of the first season, we went 49 and 33. Honestly, I didn't even think we were going to make the playoffs at first because the record just wasn't going well for us. But then we turned it around. We went 49 and 33. So when we look at the stats real quick, let's see uh, what all happened here. We had Damian Lillard averaging about 30 points per game. Obviously, I just can't get rid of Damian Lillard throughout the video. But McCollum, you know, not a bad sidekick, 21 and a half points. McCollum also a very good player. Nurkic, I can't see myself trading him either just because he's on such a good contract. Like, literally making around $12 million a year. That is such good money for a center. Ronnie Hood averaged 14 and a half points per game. I definitely am interested in bringing him back. Whiteside was not bad off the bench either with 10 and 10 and about a block off the bench. That's not terrible numbers at all. So, definitely wouldn't mind bringing back Whiteside. But we are facing the Clippers in the first round. So, I'm just going to go ahead and say we're probably going to lose here because, you know, Kawhi and Paul George, uh, they're up 2-0 uh can we even it up somehow some way they're up 3-1 and it looks like they're gonna beat us and they do beat us in five games and now it's the battle of los angeles and then yada 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 you got brooklyn and philly brooklyn and uh washington uh philly and boston is what i meant to say and then golden state and houston looks like the warriors are gonna be facing the lakers which is a possible western conference finals this year hopefully not hopefully the warriors don't even make it close but you know they're still a very good team and we got the lakers and the sixers you know, the same normal stuff that usually happens and looks like the Lakers are going to be taking home the crown. But this time, this next season, we're going to try to build this team up as much as possible to take on the crown ourselves. So I do plan on probably doing a sign and trade with Hassan Whiteside. I think that's the thing that makes the most sense in this situation. We do end up with the 24th overall pick. I'm sure we could get somebody decent. Terry Stotts is a decent head coach. He's not bad at all, but... I'm going to try, I love Terry Stotts from real life, but I think I'm going to try to get Michael Stauffer. I haven't got Michael Stauffer in a while, and he never comes anymore. Like, you used to be able to get him on 2K19 whenever you wanted, and, uh, like, this year, he's just not about it. Like, he doesn't really care for you, and he rejects my offer again. So, I guess I'll get Jacob Underwood, even though, uh, I don't even know if we're really going to be a defensive type of team. 
Now I'm going to get uh, Otis Newman. So we're going to get that. And then boom, our coaching staff is brand new. So now when we go into the draft, uh, we got the 24th overall pick. I don't know if we could trade up. I could like possibly trade this year little and trade up maybe. But I don't know if I want to do that necessarily. Uh, but I don't think I will, honestly. So we'll probably just leave this one off. Uh, Robert Covington would be a perfect fit next to Lord McCollum, but I'm looking bigger picture here, and, pos and plus I don't want to trade two first. So let's just see when we get the 24th overall pick. Hopefully something good, and then we'll be all set. So we got Jalen Smith, uh, Khalil Whitney. Uh, man, actually, I'm not really liking any of these options. Jalen Smith isn't bad. Uh, don't get me wrong, but... I actually think I might get Robert Covington, if believe it or not, just because I think he might be a better uh, C minus rating Jalen Smith. I guess Jalen Smith wouldn't be bad, but I would kind of have. Uh, so you know what? I think I will try to get uh, Robert Covington. Now I'm not going to try to trade. I know I'm trading 20 year old Nasir Little right now, and that Tobias Harris is also not a bad offer as well. I like the idea of getting Tobias Harris. I think I got to do that. We're going to get Tobias Harris. We're going to get a first rounder and return as well. We'd be trading. Okay, yeah, we're doing this trade no matter what. So Nisir, or Tobias Harris, I think, would just be a perfect fit next to lower to McCollum. Now, worst case scenario, we do keep uh, McCollum, which isn't that, obviously, much of a worst case scenario. But we do keep him. Hazonia declines, and we get Simons and Zach Collins back. And then for qualifying offers, Scalabis here, my friend, I probably won't be bringing you back. And then for moratorium or salary cap space, we just literally grabbed a very expensive contract in Tobias Harris, but I think he's going to fit here nicely. Ken Bazemore, we most likely won't bring back. As much as I liked you, 40-year-old uh, Pau Gasol, I won't be bringing you back either. Now, my only option, I don't even know if I'll have the bird rights in the white side. I very well may not, and I do not. So are we allowed to bring him back? We probably can't. So maybe I should have just traded him when I had the chance, but... What can you do, right? What can you do? So let's go to all positions and then go to overalls. And where is Whiteside? Let me just see if I can offer him a large contract. I most likely can't, but we're going to check anyway. There he is. I was like, where is Whiteside? Um, we can actually. How much does he want? $14 million a year? That might be able to get us a decent player. So I think I'm going to offer Hassan Whiteside a contract. So I can do a sign it. Oh, I need to get Ronnie Hood back too, though. I cannot let Ronnie Hood walk. There he is. He wants... Okay, he wants quite a bit of money as well. So we can sign both of these guys. Uh, maybe do a sign and trade with both of them for a small forward because, like, we're going to have lowered McCollum, Ronnie Hood, or I don't know. Well, or we could trade or we can move Tobias Harris to the three. And then, although his defense is horrible, we got Whiteside and Nurkic. I don't need both of them for sure. What would McCollum get me anyway? I'm just curious because he is on a large Middleton, Levine, Reddish, Bojan. I'm um, not really seeing anything like that crazy. I mean, Drew Holiday, obviously the defense would be there. But yeah, I mean, I think I might just keep McCollum for this next season. The fact that we just got Tobias Harris. So let me see. Could I trade Rodney Hood and Whiteside for like a power forward or a small forward? Dude, the fact that we could have gotten D'Lo, that's awesome. But I don't need D'Lo. I really don't. Robert Covington isn't much of an upgrade. Uh, D'Lo, literally, that's such an awesome offer. But I would have to trade Anthony Simons, which I just don't think I want to do. Um, let me see what other options might be out here. So we got Chris Middleton. That's probably not going to happen. Um, what else? Kevin Love, obviously always an option, but I don't think I want to go the Kevin Love route. John Collins. Uh, I'm looking for a forward that might make sense here. Julius Randle at the power forward spot would be actually nice as well. But then again, the defense would still suck. So as far as defensively, Porzingis... I think I've gotten him in a Blazers video before. Blake Griffin would be interesting. Siakam would be interesting. I don't know if Siakam would be very possible. I have yet. We could just bring back Lamarcus Aldridge as well. But let me try Siakam first. Let me try to swoop up Siakam. So Whiteside would need about nine more million dollars in the trade. So if we were trading Ronnie Hood and Whiteside for Siakam, would they do this straight up? No. Okay. How about a first round pick? How about another one for all for Siakam? This is just going to be straight for Siakam. I'll offer four first for Siakam. And no, we don't get him. Okay, so what about two first? And we also offer, as much as I don't want to do it. Okay, I traded Anthony Simons, but we got Siakam. Okay, so now I'm going to move Tobias Harris to small forward. And we got Lord McCollum, Tobias Harris, Siakam, and Nurkic. So yes, we don't have a bench whatsoever, but the starting five is going to be really good. So 
Uh, let's get Shabazz Napier. He wouldn't be a bad backup point guard option. Plus, he's played in Portland before. Um, what else we got? Myers Leonard is literally our best center option, so let me offer him a contract as well. Shooting guard position, uh, Wayne Ellington, you know, might not be a bad backup shooting guard. So let me see if I can get uh, all three of these players. At least, uh, okay. And we get, nope, we don't have enough. Okay, could I get, I would love to get Cantor, but obviously we can't. Howard, as far as affordable centers out here that are still left, Ekebe Udo, that's really not anything special. Wesley Matthews, Iguodala. If I could definitely uh, afford Iguodala, I would definitely definitely do that but we still have zach collins so i gotta keep that in mind and now one two three four five six seven eight so we basically need like one more player a small forward or a center would be great and ekebe udo is my best option right now which kind of sucks so uh mesri bogut uh what about small forwards garrett temple cj miles lol dang i guess i'll go tory craig for a year i mean that's like literally my best option at this point because I traded for so many freaking veteran players. But you know what? It may or may not be worth it at the end. So what I'm going to do is simulate this next season. And we're going to see how this season goes. Hopefully it goes my way. If not, then we can make some changes. More changes from there. At the end of the season, LeBron James is your most valuable player. LaMelo Ball is your rookie of the year. Cole Anthony, six man. Giannis. Zach Collins is your most improved. Eight points and six rebounds off the bench. Not bad at all. And then Frank Vogel is your coach of the year. So uh, NBA first team for Mr. Russell Westbrook. NBA second team. And I'm not seeing the Damian Lillard here. Probably because we had a lot more scores. We are still the sixth seed even though we won 50 games. Uh, so this Western Conference obviously was pretty tough. I'm honestly nervous uh, because we're going to face the Clippers again. And I was just curious. Damian Lillard averaged around 24 points. So yeah, his scoring did go down quite a bit. But uh, Nurkic's scoring actually went up quite a bit. And we have McCollum still with 18, 14, and 12. 10, you know, 10 points off the bench for Shabazz Napier, uh, 8 points, 7.8 from Wayne Ellington, and then we had, you know, 2.3 from Torrey Craig. So not, you know, not bad by any means, but we do have to face Clippers again, so that kind of sucks. So hopefully somehow, some way, we can beat them. I did build a better team than last year, so uh, we are up 1-0 to start, uh, but they probably still have Kawhi and Paul George, which they do actually. And they, uh, okay, they, I honestly thought they were going to go up 3-1, 3-2. And they beat us in six. Of course. Why wouldn't they? So, yeah. We just lost to the Clippers. Um, Really not much else to do besides maybe trade CJ. Like, that's the only other thing I can think of. And then maybe, just maybe, this team would get a little bit better. But uh, I think I'm going to do one more season. I'm going to trade CJ, I think. And then still sign some bench players, of course. Um, I don't know what other, like, options there would be. Because we definitely are, like, capped out with what, I've, what trades I've made. So... Let's go to league meetings and see if we can, you know, decide whether or not to do something like that. So let's go to the draft lottery and uh, let's see what we got. We got uh, nothing here. Looks like nothing major for us anyway. The 23rd pick. Okay. Staff signing still going to be good. We'll keep that all there. But for the draft, um, I don't think I'm going to be drafting anyone. Let's just see what the 23rd pick and Mr. CJ McCollum could get me. I mean, look at that. Look at that money. Chris Middleton. Don't get me wrong, not a bad option. Zach Levine, Marcus Smart, Jimmy Butler. Wow, that almost makes me want to do it. Jimmy Butler would not be bad at all. But is Jimmy Butler more suited at the small forward than the shooting guard? Let me see what, instead, let me just see what Tobias Harris could get me straight up. We get Chris Middleton, we still get Zach Levine, Marcus Smart, Nicola could get Jimmy Butler just for Tobias Harris. Could do that, which I'm almost tempted to do that. Buddy Heald, Vernon Carey Jr., Vucevic. Um, let's just see if there's any. Uh, I think I will get Jimmy Butler. I think I'm going to grab Jimmy Butler. I have not got Jimmy Butler in uh, a rebuild yet, so I'm definitely happy to, to take on Jimmy Butler. So we got Jimmy Butler, and then we're going to have Lillard, Jimmy Butler, Siakam. So the defense is going to be a lot better in uh, that category, but I definitely still want to try to maybe trade CJ. We could get Chris Middleton. But if I wanted to trade CJ McCollum, I definitely would want a shooting guard in return. But I just don't know if there's going to be that good of an option. Zach Levine is all right and all, but I just don't know if that's like the best option for me. So as far as shooting guards out there, obviously Kawhi and Paul George are going to be free agents, but I can't afford either of them. So I'm not going to try that. Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell are going to be free agents. Both good defenders there. Uh, Aaron Gordon, Terrence Ross. So yeah, I probably might be stuck with CJ McCollum, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Like, I don't want to trade for Brogdon. Oladipo, 
uh, wouldn't be a bad option. Drew Holiday is just a little bit down in overall. So, you know, maybe just getting... Could trade for Devin Booker as well. I mean, why not? Let's try it. Let's try to get Devin Booker. I don't know if it's going to work. But Cesar McCollum for Devin Booker straight up. I'm going to offer like everything I can and then some. So let's just see if we could get... Okay, so we got Devin Booker. That was quick. So Lil Shabazz, Devin Booker, and Jimmy Butler, Siakam, and Nurkic. That's going to be quite a starting five if you ask me. So we're going to get past this rookie signing and go to player options. We have none. Obviously, we still have the bench to worry about in this uh, free agency. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zach Collins is going to be a free agent. Other than that, hopefully we can just focus on getting some other players here. So let's just see. Uh, we have Napier, which I'm cool with him. And then that's about it. So we're going to have to fill out the rest of the bench. So we're going to get Zach Collins back no matter what. Dotson isn't a bad backup shooting guard. So let me go ahead and offer him a contract. Uh, we could get, uh, let's see, Wartford. Wartford only wants $1 million. Um, sign me up. It's been only be assigned to his current value. What does that mean? Okay. I can't get him. So I don't know what... Uh, I don't know what it is, but I definitely can't get him. So we could bring back Harkless. Uh, we could bring back Dougie McThunder. We could bring Dougie McThunder buckets here. I think I will do that. And then as far as the center, Reed, Boban. Um, let's get Boban for a year. And I think that should be good. I got Nurkic back, didn't I? Yeah, he's not out. Okay, so I did get Nurkic back. I was just making sure. I don't remember accepting his option, but we got him back. I think. I got to double check now because I'm nervous that I didn't get him back. So hold on. Let me double check. I have Nurkic. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm just making sure. But now uh, let's just see. We're going to get hopefully all three of these guys. And then we can just match whatever Zach Collins gets offered. He may not even get offered anything. We can't sign Dodson and we can't sign Boban. So we got Dougie McThunder buckets instead. And our shooting guard spot is going to be bad. Uh, let's get Jerry and Grant, I guess. And maybe move him to shooting guard. And then, yeah, we're going to be super thin. But I think it might be worth it in the end. So let's get... Uh, Gary and Grant, we're going to move him to shooting guard. And then I think we'll just get Zach Collins back. And I think that's going to do that. That's basically going to do it. So, yeah, the bench isn't going to be great by any means, but it, it'll be all right. So I think I'm going to simulate to the end of next season. And hopefully this is the season. We put it all together and win a ring, baby. End of this last season, Stephen Curry is your MVP, almost averaging 40 points per game. That is just like literally insane numbers. But we are the third seed this time. So we're no longer the sixth seed. We're the third seed this time. Let me just get to the second round. I'll call this video an accomplishment. But of course, the bigger thing we want to do is, of course, win a championship. So can we do that? That would be the best thing uh, possible. We're up 1-0 on the Grizzlies. Up 2-0. And we probably won't have to face the Clippers because they are the eighth seed. But, you know, they may upset some people. But we do move on to the second round. We are going to have to face the Rockets. Yes. Okay. We're up 1-0 on them. Uh, they even it up with us. Uh, they're up 2-1. 2-2 two, two for us, 3-2 for us, and we won in 6, and we do. And we are in the Western Conference Finals facing the Golden State Warriors, 2-0, 2-1. Let's go 3-1. Don't go down 3-2. Don't go down 3-2. I just said it, 2K. All right, let's see if we can come down uh, from a 3-2 deficit and basically win this championship. So, uh, 32 points in the first quarter. That should be a W, hopefully, and we do go ahead and blow them out, 99-123. But we do have, um, let's go to SimCast. We do have Game 7. And let's see how this game seven decides to go. So it looks like, okay, pretty close game so far. And we lose by eight points, 39, three and six. All right, so uh, yeah, that's how the video is gonna end. We lost in the Western Conference Finals. So, all right, man, no hard feelings. Golden State Warriors win the championship. Stephen Curry literally averaged 45 points in the finals. What is going on? 34 year old Stephen Curry with 34 points or 45 points. Those are just insane numbers, dude. Holy moly. What is this? Can you two not score the ball? Like, is Stephen Curry, like, just taking the ball ever? I don't know, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. This is Crushables, and I'm saying peace.